Hey everybody, DSR here with another Gundam review. This time around I have a custom for you. This is uh, my Stark Jesta. It's, it's a little bit of a modified uh, Jesta, uh, the original model. I uh, swapped a couple parts off of uh, the Stark Jagan that I have here. Uh, and did a, a few little modifications to it. So I'll just go ahead and move these guys out of the way. Now the first modification I did was actually just adding the backpack. And as you can see, uh, the only thing I've done to it was add another booster, and that was off of one of the Rezl C's, I believe. Um, it has all the extra skirt armor uh, with a lot of extra uh, verniers or boosters or whatever you want to call them on there. So I just threw another one up here on top of it, uh, as well as the large, like, Jagan one on the bottom. Uh, so that was the, the first modification I did. Uh, as you can see, I've, I have the Stark Jagan here. And the backpack connectors uh, for both these models, and I, I believe uh, several other models actually have these as well. It's just these kind of two prongs and the two slots in the backpack. Uh, so the cool thing about a lot of these high grade Universal Century kits is uh, it takes very little modification to swap certain parts out. Uh, so I went ahead and did that. That was a really easy modification, uh, really just a part swap. Uh, the other mods I did was I added the side skirts from, I believe it was the Delta Kai. Again, I, I didn't use all the extra parts on that model. Uh, and I added the original Jesta side skirts to it. Uh, so he has still the grenade side skirts, uh, the holsters. Uh, but there's kind of a, a much longer side skirt, uh, almost kind of like a wing. Uh, Anyhow, yeah, I just, I just kind of liked having a wider profile on the hips. Uh, but I wanted to keep the grenades uh, holsters on there without having to like move them out down onto the legs or something like that. Uh, so that's it for that. The last modification I did on the body itself is I swapped um, the beam saber arm out for uh, the uh, just two magazine arms, uh, just because I, he does he doesn't have a beam saber anymore. Instead, he just has double the ammunition for his rifle. Now onto the rifle, I did add another handle on here. Uh, for extra grip. If I had a, a holding hand down here I would show you. I, I have, I believe I have taken a picture of it though, uh, of him holding it outright. Uh, so it can reach all the way over there. I just don't want to do it right now and try and scratch up the paint. Um, the other mod I did was uh, took one of the cannons from the Lodo set and chopped the barrel off of it, hollowed it out a little bit, and added it on as kind of a grenade launcher onto the bottom of the Jesta rifle. Uh, so if, if you haven't noticed yet, uh, the color scheme I was going for is the like new Gundam uh, colors. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook, uh, you've probably seen some of my pictures of uh, the Nunicorn project that I've been working on, which is a kit bash between, uh, uh, let's see, what did I use? I used the regular Unicorn Gundam uh, Unicorn mode, and I used a Banshee Destroy mode. Uh, I've kit bashed those two as well as uh, use some of the parts from, I believe it was the Delta Kai's head as well. Uh, did a head swap on it and I uh, did a lot of weapon modifications um, and some body modifications as well um, to kind of make it into uh, the, a new styled Unicorn Gundam. And the reason I did this as well as I'm going to do uh, my uh, Jesta Cannon, which I'm modifying as well, uh, is to have uh, a three-man team, two Jestas, ex escorting the Nunicorn. Uh, so I'm doing them up uh, in this white, black, and red color scheme. As you can see, I, the only part that's red on here is actually the crotch piece, the emblem down there. Uh, I used Krylon flat white uh, for a majority of the body. I left a lot of the joint pieces and like hands and everything, uh, just the regular pl gray plastic. I have not painted the the Jesta backpack yet, uh, but I probably might even just leave it the same plastic. I just need to top coat it. I also used uh, Krylon Satin Black, and I believe it's Rust-Oleum. Uh, it's like a dark metallic metal color that's down here. And I used that on the thrusters here in the back, as well as uh, the waist area where the tubing is. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on camera. Um, but you can definitely see that there's a uh, it's a difference in color. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Uh, I left the visor, the orange as well. Uh, I, I really like it actually in this color scheme. 
Uh, I'm, I wasn't a huge fan of the just as original colors, the kind of uh, different blues. Uh, and I think it turned out really well in the crisp white and black. Um, actually, let me just put up the paints that I used. I have the Krylon Flat White Fusion, Satin Black, uh, Banner or Red, which is actually a gloss, but I added a top coat or a flat coat to it. And uh, what is left of one of my cans of Mr. Super Clear Flat. Now, uh, I think I've talked about it in a previous video, uh, but my priming uh, process is actually to use Krylon shortcuts. Uh, the I think it, I forget what it's, what they call it. Uh, just chrome, but it's a really really like flat leaf silver. It goes on super super thin and smooth, um, and is a perfect uh, priming coat for white. Uh, the white I've I use on this is probably three or four coats, but with the flat it's super thin. Uh, and so with, within three or four coats of the really thin white, uh, it came out really crisp. So I'm, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And as always, it still looks good on, <laughs> on top of uh, a base jabber, uh, which I might actually end up painting as well. Uh, I have three of them, and it's going to be a three-man team. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you like uh, my little Jesta project. Uh, and can't wait to finish up the Unicorn and my other Jesta and show them to you guys. So thanks for watching. See you next time.